the very first thing you're going to do, no matter what, when you're using markers, and I'm not even going to start with markers, but if you're using markers, the first thing you do is take your tracing paper and put it down on your board. If you choose not to do this, what will happen? Well, it looks like, can I see everything here? Sorry, I want to get it beautiful for the video. There we go. Um, if you don't tape this down on your board, the markers will cut through pretty much anything that isn't like titanium. They will bleed through. And we're going to be coloring on bond, bond just being white paper. What will happen is you will color the bond. It will bleed through the bond. And you will get to look at a ghosty rendition of your first colored project for as long as you own the drafting board because it will go on the drafting board and it just stays there forever. Um, so always put down a piece of trace. For some reason, the markers won't bleed through this trace. So step one, always put down the trace. Um, I'm gonna start with, and I did this little exercise. We're gonna talk about markers. And let me just grab some white paper. I'm gonna wanna do this on bond. Um, with the pencils, what we're trying to do, if you want to do renderings in colored pencil, you're, you're kind of trying to avoid seeing the lines. And how do you do that? All right, well, there's a couple different ways. You know, with the Prismacolors, one way of doing it, you know, start out light because you can always make it heavier. And, you know, even if I do this, you'll see I'm still getting lines. And please remind me to show you my daughter's Prismacolor drawing. It was scary. Okay, I mean, that's not bad, but I can still see the lines. Well, if I just kind of keep going over it in different directions, Let's try it this way. And I'm, I'm just barely dragging my pencil on there, and I'm just building up a nice flat wash. Now, when I say a flat wash, that just means one stroke of color without a whole lot of tone to it. But I tend to use gradated, great, I like to get gradation in my washes, because if you look at any color that you see here, any look at any wall, you know, that's a white wall, but the corners, it's not even white, it's a little off white, but the corners brighter than the middle, which is different than the shadows. It, you just, in life, you don't see just a square of color. It's usually got some gradation to it. So again, you know, hit the corner a little hard and then come down and lighten it up a little and start at one edge. And I, I make a little circular stroke, but I go real lightly. And I just try and blend it in and then I'll go back and do this end again. And 
and it just gives it a little character and a little more depth. And again, with the Prismacolors, if you bear down on them, I mean, you can get it to look just like the color of the pencil. And then just lighten it out. It's a beautiful technique, by the way. There are uh, Stephen Oles, O-L-E-S, Oles Prismacolor. If you Google that, this guy's got some unbelievable building renderings that he does in Prismacolor. I mean, they take forever. He charges a fortune for them, but they're stunning. <laughs> All right, so that's one of the advantages of Prismacolor. You can also do a very distinct flat wash, like I said, where you pretty much just crank on these things until the cows come home. And they'll lay down a nice patch or whatever color the pencil is. But I tend to not do that a lot because I don't find myself in a scenario where I need just a flat wash of that blue but they will do it you go over and over they don't get super shiny they don't get waxy they just lay down that color and that's pretty nice um, and that's what i talked about here now we're going to talk about magic markers a little bit you saw what it took to do these and how long it took Now, let's see if we can get a magic marker. It's got some life left in it. I, I was just grabbing everything I had. Ooh, see, that's a little intense. <clears throat> Most of these markers are, oh, that's a minute. That's not bad. All right, so there are different ways of doing magic markers. One way is a straight line flat wash. And with that, and this is where we used to do all our drawings. You would go straight across, and then you would go straight across. And this marker is so juicy, it's going to do a nice job, but usually it doesn't. All right. Now, if you remember how long it took me to draw that little square and make it a solid flat wash, this is much quicker. There's a problem with this, and I'm gonna see if I can find a marker that's not quite as full of life as that one. Oh, uh, no. When they're new and juicy, they'll do that. Yeah, all right, we can just throw that one away. Um, Nile green. Let's see what that is. Let's see if there's anything in it. My God. Let's do mystery grab. Yeah, that one's gonna be gone. I'm just trying to find a white color. What's the maple's yellow? I am finding every marker I have. <laughs> that is full of life, and usually they're all half dead. There, this is perfect. All right, so what happens when you do the flat washes? What you get, typically, holidays. holidays, and you see those little stripes? And it, you can do that, and it's actually kind of a nice effect. That's not the end of the world. Where it turns into less than a nice effect is when you screw up. And you do that, and you do that, and you do that, and someone walks through the door, and you, whoop. Once that's in there, there's no fixing it. It's going to stand out like a sore thumb. I can't go back over it, because if I go back over it, then I wind up with a dark spot, which makes it look worse. That's the 
spot where the contractor did a really bad job with yeah. the vinyl siding. Yep, it, it's just, and there's no help for it. I mean, so I don't, I used to, like I said, we used to do these all the time. I used to, remember, I used to color 24 by 36 inch drawings, which were at least the size of that accurate air drawing. And we would color those all by hand. We didn't do eight and a half by 11 or 11 by 17. And you'd burn through these markers. So I would lightly draw little help lines in the box. Now I would put these in there just really light. So I didn't go astray when I was drawing these big areas, usually green on site plans. It's a pain. The next one that I'm gonna talk about is the broken line wash. And the broken line wash is my go-to colored marker. That one's almost just too dry and that mint was too wet. Black, that'll be fine. I will dump all these out and we'll just start using them. Ooh, what's that? that looks fun? Flagstone red. That one's gotta be dead. Yeah, that's seen better days. Um All right, so the broken line wash is just, you just go fast and loose and you and you'll notice because it's so uneven, if you make a mistake, it's not a problem because it's just all over there and it just makes kind of a nice tone. What you can also do with this is you can then build it up so you can see every layer you put over it, it gets a little darker. And I, I'm, I'm stippling a lot in there. All right, so you remember how long it took me to do this as a, as a gradated wash. This is bigger and it went even quicker. So that is my go-to, the broken line built up wash I use all the time. You can do the same thing with a straight line wash. Is it this one? Yeah, I mean, that one's, you know, you can Go over it twice, and then go over it a third time. What I've found is, and you can do the same thing, but it's tougher to get it as funky as this, and it, it tends to look too static. Again, I don't tend to use a lot of straight line washes. Um, completely lost what I was gonna say, but yeah, so, this one, broken line wash, is the one I'm going to have you doing, and we're going to use it throughout. It gives it a real nice watercolory feel to it. Um, it goes fast. You don't have to be, it, it looks messy, and that's what you want. Um, if you'll notice, that was cutting through. All right, that's just my pencil. But didn't wind up on my desk. You'll see a few green dots on my, this looks really bad. What do we got? Is this like, oh yeah, that's evil. <laughs> and there you go. All right, and without this tracing paper, that would be permanently embedded on my brand new drafting board and I would be sad. We'll blot it up a little bit. Um, a lot of these markers are the old ones, so they've got the solvent in them and they smell like spray paint. I apologize for that, but I grab whatever I had. 
Um, puddling stipple, that's pretty simple. It's what I was doing here. So what you do, is you just kind of dot it around. And although on bond, it doesn't tend to puddle that much. That's just a stipple buildup. But on tracing paper, what will happen is if you do it enough, you'll start to see it gets that kind of puddly effect. And that can be kind of nice. Um, it sucks a lot of ink out of your marker, but it, it's just a different effect, and it's not bad. Uh, trace tape, we're gonna be doing some coloring directly on trace, which is fun, but I don't tend to use it, and I'll tell you why later. Um, as far as little vertical hairy lines, I mean, Instead of doing a straight line wash, you can do this, make lines that go up. And if you're going to do this, I would recommend laying down some light pencil lines in the beginning. I've got the pencil lines to follow. Can you do that with the fatter part of the marker? Does it have to be on the point? I suppose you could. See, I don't have any lines to help me, so it's... I like the point better. But you can. I mean, it, it's okay. But again, if you look at the time it took me to do that versus. If I want to make it darker, I just go crazy on it and just put layers over it. And it's just faster, and I kind of like the look of that a little better. Um, you're going to notice a huge difference between working on trace and working on bond. Um, look at how bold that green is there versus here. And if you'll notice, on this one, you know, if I do one layer, that's one green. Let it dry for a second. Well, now, just by doubling up, I got a darker green. And if I triple up, I get an even darker green. It's been my experience that about three times, maybe four, well, four worked. Once you start getting much past three or four, it doesn't get, there's not much of a difference. The difference between one coat of green and two is pronounced. Between two and three, it's visible. Between three and four, it's starting to get to a point where you can't see it. And once you go much past that, it just all looks like a green blob. Um, quick pointers. Work fast and be loose. Um, it, it's much like with your line work, that's what gives it the character. You'll get used to it. And, and I want you to work real quickly with them. Um, it saves on your markers because where was that ugly one? Okay, I mean, there's a dollar's worth of the marker, there's two dollars worth <laughs> of ink, there's three, four, five, you know, I do two more lines like that and I've sucked all the ink out of the marker. So, again, you know, if you go quick, in theory, although this might not be the greatest example, you'll see it's a little lighter and it's not just draining my marker. Um, if your marker's squeaking, you're probably going too slow or uh, it's running out of ink. Um, so you shouldn't hear a lot of squeaks. Until you're comfortable drawing horizontal lines freehand, 
put faint help lines to guide you. That's, I'm talking about these washes, which I'm not gonna have you do a lot of anyways. Uh, on print paper and bond paper, subtle marker colors make a vivid impression. On tracing paper, bold colors are required to be visible. How white was this mint? Was that the one we used? Yeah. Um, all right, yeah, there. That's a nice grass. But see how light that is? Notice the difference? Um, it, it's, just, it's just how they show up. If you wanted the trace darker, you just keep going over it? Is that the, is there's it, a limit. Once again, I'll, I'll do that for you. And then you'll, it'll start to puddle up. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's do half of it with a second layer. There's a the second layer. Well, it's a little darker. Yeah. And I have to let it dry, which takes a little while on trace. And I mean, I go over it again. But now you're starting to see the puddling. See the puddles? Mm -hmm. And I mean, I kind of like puddling at times, but it, it's, you know, if I just sit here and just try and puddle as much ink as I can on there, I'm still not getting there. And, you know, if I did two coats on this, or three, you know, or I started puddling, it gets pretty vivid. Um, the other thing that will happen, I think you'll notice, is the color tends to fade. When you first put it on, it looks really bright and strong and vivid. As it dries, it tends to soften up a little. Um, be careful mixing different brand markers and using markers over ink work. Some markers, especially Prismacolor, will bleed other inks. Um, let's see if I can ruin it. That's pretty dead. Uh, let's see if the other end's got any life left in it. A little bit. Ah, uh, there you go. I don't know if you can see that line, but you'll see that line fatten right up. See how blobby the black line got there? You're gonna be putting line work on your drawings. You're gonna be doing that after you put down your color. Um, trying to put marker over line work. It just, it, it depends on the markers. Um, some of the ones with all the solvents in them don't tend to bleed. Ah, no, it's bleeding. There it goes. Look at that. That's bleeding like crazy. Y you just don't know what's going to happen. So y you tend to do your black ink work last. Don't try and put marker over your ink work. Um, and different brands. Some colors you can mix. I can get anything. It's not so much on on bond. It's tough. On trace, they stay alive and wet for a while. So sometimes you can. And then you can go back over it. And you can kind of mix it, but you, you'll see it kind of erases some of the earlier stuff and puddles a little. It, it's handy for trace, but it's questionable for bond. And I don't tend to do a lot of mixing. I'll, I'll every now and then I will do a little bit of that, but I'll tend to use. That one's getting pretty tired, but let's try it anyways. All right, let's do, uh, what's that, forest green? I'll take two greens and I'll try and, oh, that's juicy. You know, mix it in there. And you'll do that on your trees. But I can't believe how much life's in that marker. 
Um, so it, it's, but on trace, you can do that forever. Not necessarily forever, but. And you'll, you'll see me on trace when we do water. I'll do this with blues. That's kind of fun. Um, all right, steps I use when applying color, and we'll be doing this shortly. Lay down flat washes, add texture to flat washes with markers, add lightweight ink work, profiles, add sky elevation. That's actually backwards. Uh, provide art stick texture, provide heavy base elevation. Um, you're not doing elevations tonight, so you don't have to worry about that. I do the sky with the flat washes and the texture of the washes. Having said all of that, let us do a plan. Does anyone ever use watercolor? I mean, I know you can't really use it with some kind of paper. Here's, here's the issue with watercolor. And watercolor renderings are beautiful. They're absolutely gorgeous. A lot of the stuff you would see in like the 1800s and 1900s, it's called, if you look up the Col de Beaux-Arts, they would do all their illustrations in ink washes and watercolor. The problem with watercolor is the steps involved. You have to take, first of all, watercolor doesn't work on normal paper. You need watercolor paper. So first you gotta transfer your drawing to the watercolor paper. And you typically do that with a carbon paper or graphite on the back. You have to put it on your sheet of watercolor paper, trace over everything you drew once to get the lines down. Then you paint over it with a watercolor, which goes phenomenally fast and looks beautiful. Then you got to put your ink work on all over again. So there's a lot of steps involved. And what we used to have to do was take, um, we take sheets of plywood, we'd take our watercolor paper, we'd bring the watercolor paper and the plywood into the shower with us. We would soak, the, these are big sheets of watercolor paper, we would soak the watercolor paper and the plywood. You would then lay the watercolor paper on the plywood. You would staple one inch around, all the way around the perimeter, and then you let it dry for a couple days. And it would shrink and tighten right up and it made a nice surface. That's a pain in the butt. Um, you know, it, it's, again, they're beautiful drawings, but the amount of work, the extra leg work to do them, you just don't see them done anymore. All right, I'm going to put down a fresh piece of trace because this one got all goobly. And if you're using markers in your sketchbook, just whip out a piece of trace and put it underneath the piece of paper you're working on. And I will be asking you to do some marker sketches. So... Step one, lay down a piece of trace. My drafting board's so clean and moves so smooth. I'm pretty excited. I haven't purchased a new drafting board in probably seven or eight years. And the one that I was using before that you can't get anymore was reasonably priced, but as you notice, it fell apart on me at the last class. It tends to fall apart in the car. Pieces of plastic were cracking off of it and it was getting real stiff. This one seems to be better made and cost a little bit less, so hooray. Uh, we're going to do, if you could hand me one of those sketches right up there. 
This is going to be your assignment, one of them. You're going to get to do this twice. But tonight we're going to do this first. I want you to try it. Let's see if that lines up pretty well. Close enough. Um, first, I want you to do it on tracing paper. And tracing paper is just a fun way to color. Because again, it's so subtle and they, they make a real pretty drawing. Um, in the beginning, you like doing it because it's so subtle and you get scared. The two scariest points of any rendering project are one, looking at a blank piece of paper that's very intimidating, just getting started. The second one is adding color because what will happen is you folks get really good at doing black and white line work and you can do a real attractive drawing and you get it done and you get it printed and you get ready to color it and in a matter of two and a half minutes, you ruin it. And it, it, it goes bad very quickly in the beginning. And you'll get better at it. Your first ones will have issues. Um, and I tend to do all my work when I'm coloring, I color on the bond paper. So with tracing paper, because everything's so subtle, you can get away with a few more mistakes. But when you get to bond, once you put it down, it's there. And those are the ones you'll tend to screw up. Or you'll spend 45 minutes coloring it, and then you'll, take, you'll grab the wrong marker and put this blob in the middle of it and realize I have to start again. All right, so first I put my trace down. Now we're going to do this. First, we're going to do our big flat washes. And what we, the first flat wash we've got on this is, of course, green. And we've got lots of green. And it's a site plan. So I've got, OK, I usually, I'll be testing my markers. If you want to do it on a scrap, you can do it on a scrap. See how much life is in them. See if it's the color you want. I'm all right with that. This is willow green. It's, I don't know what Prismacolor marker I had. It's your light green. And I'm going to do everything, all the trees, all the grass, pretty much everything that isn't built or water. I'm going to go ahead and just lay down. Willow green, and I'm doing it with those. I go right through the trees on this first pass. You know, I, I'm not super worried about getting well, this marker felt lively at first and now it's starting to conk out on me. That's all right. Trying to, you know, if you go over the line a little bit, it's not the end of the world. Anything that's green, I'm going over all the grass, all the trees. You'll notice on the edges of the drawings, I don't just fill into the property line. I spill it out a little and put a couple stipples in there. Much like the trees hanging out over the drawing, having a little color. In this case, is going to draw your eye in. Is that even working anymore? just as bad. Let's see if we can squeak a little life out of her. It's subtle, so we're okay with that. Very 
very subtle. All right, I've covered everything with green one coat. The next thing I'm gonna go for, for flat washes I really have, or for big areas, the next thing I've got is I've got my pavement. I'm gonna leave the house white. Uh, I've got the concrete and I've got the water. I'm gonna go for the water because that one I am gonna fill in. If I can find a blue, I'm looking for a light blue, which I thought I had. Yeah, that's nice. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is just put one layer of that sapphire blue, which you can barely see at all. Just lay it right on there. That'll be handy when we're using bond. Okay. For the um, driveways, I'm going to use, that's going to be too dark. That's a 30. Actually, that's not bad. All I'm going to do on the pavement areas, the driveway, the road, the walkway, is I'm just going to aim for the corners and I'm just going to put a little bit in. I might put a little bit here, but I'm not, I might put a little more on the concrete, but again, I don't fill in the driveways. It just, it's too much. Just a little bit will go a long ways. Okay, so now I've got my first flat washes down. The next thing I would do is I would take the trees and I would add, I want to darken those up a little bit. So I'm going to go over all the trees. On bond, I could just hit it again with that light green on tracing paper, I'm not so sure I'm gonna be happy doing that. How dark is this? That's kind of neon. Ah, let's see what happens. All right, I'm gonna go through all the trees and I'm gonna put another layer of green on there. And I'm using something that's a little more vivid because it's on tracing paper. Just, you know, again, I'm not being hyper careful about It's a big old clump of trees there. I think I got them all. All right, so I've got one layer on the trees. I'm gonna let that dry for a second. I'm gonna hold on to this marker. I'm gonna to go to the blue. The blue that I have there. What is this? This is a crystal blue. That's a little darker. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go kind of around the perimeter of this. And let's grab that sapphire. I wanna put a little character in there. So I'm just kind of doing the edges. Maybe put a couple dots in there, and then I'm going to take the original light blue that I worked and just try and just kind of feather that out a little bit. Just soften. It gives it a little 
It's a subtle difference at the edge, but it's there. Uh, the grays, you know, maybe I put a little bit more in a corner, a little bit more here, just a couple dots. You really don't even see that much of them. You wait till I do this on bond. A couple dots here and there. By now that tree green has dried out a fair amount, I'm gonna put a second layer of this green on two thirds of the tree down and to the right, casting where the shadow is. So I'm just doing the back side of these. It's a little faster each time because you're not doing the whole tree. I'm just approximately doing two thirds of it. it. Gets a little messy in here because a lot of these trees, try and aim for the big trees first. Again, down and to the right, sort of. All I'm doing is adding some texture to these. I'm gradating and adding a little texture to them. It's subtle. That'll change. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of this color to the grass at the corners. So what did I use? I used willow green. Good. All right, I'm just going to put in like a little bit here and a little bit here. Just a couple dots and you'll see what I'm gonna mess with that in a minute. I'm just kind of highlighting the corners of these things. Once I've done that, I'm going to take that willow green and try and soften that out a bit. And it just kind of highlights. See, when I rub it over that, it just kind of gets, see there's an edge to that. It's subtle, but this will kind of drag the edge out. So it just kind of makes a more of an even tone going from something just a little more vivid to a little less vivid. That'll work. You know what won't work though? Let's put a little around this pond. that out a little bit. And again, that much like I said earlier is you don't want let me throw a couple in there. We're just trying to add some character to that wash and just Soften it up a little bit. I want to find a blue. It's got a little more punch to it. Is this crystal blue? Sapphire? We tried sapphire already, I think. Yeah, sapphire's pretty. Oh, here's a nasty one. This is probably green, though. All right. 
this one, because this could get us in a lot of trouble. I am just going to put a couple dots in there. And hopefully it worked. Good. You don't want to let it sit too long. I'm just blending with a lighter color. You can get away with this on tracing paper. On bond, you got to move super fast if you're doing this. But I can kind of scrub the dots away for the most part. And it just looks like a darker blue there. And that's kind of nice. Kind of puts a nice ledge on. Trees. We laid down one coat of green. What's this one? Grass green. Is that grass green? All right, that's a little darker than our other green. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back on the tree and I'm going to go down and to the right. And instead of doing two thirds, I'm going to do like maybe a third to a half like this. And I'm trying to dot the edge of it. And you can see those starting to lift off the page already. All right, down and to the right, just do the half, throw a couple dots in there. Again, the fun part of this is as you're doing the trees in the beginning, you know, you're only doing a third as much coloring as you were doing in the beginning, so it goes by a little quicker. in there. That looks pretty good. All right, so now I've got a, a kind of a third layer of green on there. I'm going to grab another green. I'm going to take a dark green. If I can find one, i got a ton of grass green. This looks nasty. Dark green. Let's see what that is. Just going to go along the back edge of them. I'm dotting it. It's not that dark, but it's dark. And now I'm doing about half of the space, so about a quarter of the tree. So it's nice to have three greens. It's nice to have a very light green, a medium green, and a vivid dark green. And the light greens you're going to want to get a lot of because you're going to be using it a lot.
we're going to do two more things involving color. And then we're going to move on to our line work. And I'm not going to trace the whole drawing, but I will trace part of it for you. And, you know, if, all right, I'd like to smudge, see I've got those dots kind of there. If I take my middle green and I just kind of blend it, I can soften some of those dots so it stops looking like a Again, I can do this on trace pretty easily, but not so easily on bond. This doesn't leave any residue. What's that? The, the, the blending yeah. doesn't leave residue on the... It, not enough to worry about, and if you want to, it, it will actually, but what you can do to get rid of it I'll show you in a minute once I'm done. Yeah, it's a little softer and it's a little puddly and it's close enough. You can just take it and then I'll usually scrub it out. Um, the next thing I'm going to do, I've got this stone wall. So I'm going to do three things. I'm going to put a little, some type of a brownish, I don't know, what's this? Tuscan red. That's not brownish. Brick beige, one of them invisible. What is that? Sienna brown. Oh, that looks brown. And same thing, I'm just going to, first of all, I check it. Yeah, that'll work. I'm just going to put a little bit in the corners, maybe a little bit there, just to hint that it's something different. Here comes one of my favorite parts. I'm missing a cap. And this one's got what? Did I? Where to go? It's underneath your chair. Right underneath your chair. Yeah, there you go. Oh. Yay. It's a juicy one, too. All right, so next I'm going to find some violent red. What's this? Caddy. Oh, yeah, that's nice and violent. Your, your drawings are going to be, oh, I don't know if there's a lot of life left in this. We'll find out. Your site plans are going to be a sea of green. And red is the opposite of green for colors. I'm going to use that one instead. It's a little orangey, but it'll work. Um, so if you can kind of introduce some red into your plans, it'll make it pop a little bit. So what I do is I go right over my property line with a little bit of red. And you get what's known as a color shift. And it really... You can start to see how it kind of fights that green and it leaps right off the page. Um, and it does a nice job of Now you'd mentioned contaminating your markers and what you're going to find out with this when I'm using this marker on my triangle, of course my triangle has a ton of black ink on it. And that is working its way right into the tip there. This one I will scrub out and it, it will get rid of most of it. All right, so see that there? 
But if I do that enough, I'll get at least some of it out of there. Close enough, it'll work next time. All right, um, I'm done with the marker work. And what we're left with, excuse me, because everybody knows I love shoving white paper under here. You wind up with this kind of ghosty, maybe I can get it from the bottom. Which doesn't look like much. I love that. That's it's kind of, kind of fun. That it's kind of fun. <laughs> yeah. But now, what we do? Where do you want to put your house? Yeah, that's that's <laughs> what we're gonna oh, do. Yeah, that's brilliant. Is if this one's got any life left in it? Oh, I'm like winning all over. All right, I'm gonna focus right around the house. Um, so, and this is a critical step. What you get to do is you get to do all your line work all over again. It'll, it's just like doing a regular yep. ink trace? And it's just, so you just you're just lines. tracing over your lines. Now, when you guys get really good at GIMP, I don't trace over my lines anymore. Because what I do is I scan my black and white drawing in, in GIMP, which you'll have to do anyways to print it. I color it, and then I take that scan, and I basically erase all the white on it. So all that's left is the black lines, and I put that right on top of my color drawing. And I will, I can show, actually, I, I think I've got it on one of my videos past, but I will try and show you that. Let's do I'm hoping I didn't give anybody COVID, but everybody's still here, so. Except Eric. Is it Eric? Eric's gone. do the house I'm gonna do a couple more trees and we're just gonna call it a day at that but I want you to see whoopsie <clears throat> ooh that was a little off but it'll be fine Maybe if I add more lines, it'll look less screwed up. Not really. <laughs> Whoops. I like the 
this new bar. My old one was getting pretty stiff, and this one's moving nice and fast. This one? I mean, it's the only one I've ever used. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've. This one's actually pretty good. The um, it's better than the other one I had. I was used to drawing for years. I used what you've got on the desk, but some of the ones on the desk are pretty beat. Um, when they're new or have been properly maintained and the cable's good in them, they're like glass. They've got little bearings under them. They, they, you can fly with those things. And I'm used to those. And this is not too far off from that. Again, could just be because it's new. But the other one, I remember when I got it when it was new, it was still a little stiff, but I'm like, well, you know, it's 60 bucks and just the bar, those bars are like two or three hundred dollars each, just the bar without a desk. And this came with the desk and the bar. I said, I'll learn to live with it. And I did. And I used it for my work stuff. And I was looking on Craigslist to see if they had many parallel bars, and I didn't see any, so. going to trim off the edges of your paper because they have the edges. So you won't see that? Yeah. Yeah, I would, that. what I would do is, I mean, typically I'd scan it and I'd just crop that out. Okay. If you want to have your original, I mean, because I tried cutting mine with scissors, that was a bad idea. <laughs> it starts to tear. Yeah. I don't know how to do this or try to tear it with the bar and then that ripped too. And I yeah, it's, scissors are probably, you know, if you're not comfortable doing it with a ruler, like I do where I just rip it right off, scissors are probably your better bet. I mean, if you're any good with an X-Acto knife and a straight edge and... But you don't want to do it into your board. Oh, you don't want to do it. Yeah. You need a cutting Move board. You, yeah, yeah. I would get a piece of cardboard box to cut on, or you can buy... Um, most craft stores do sell cutting boards for like people that sew a lot mm -hmm. and if you use that they have a wheel for cutting fabric and a lot of people will use a it's a, it's oh, a yeah, right. yeah. yeah it's like a plasticky material and they work pretty good they're they're somewhat self-healing to a point but I mean I've sawn through a few with exacto knives back in the day we used to build models like those um, and you would cut through all sorts of cutting boards and fingers and equipment and I got very good at emergency first aid tracing paper and drafting tape can seal most wounds if the project is due in an hour <laughs> Um, now I'm going to go through and put in, I need a fat Sharpie, which is around here someplace. I need more stuff. More stuff? Yeah. Okay, I'll have to you. Yeah, it's, uh, all right, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do my profile lines and my shadows. Start with the profiles. And you're gonna leave the like back half of the trees. Yeah, I'm not do you wanna watch me trace them? No, no, I didn't think so. I mean I can. <laughs> that, well that's um, not why. I yeah. just think they look cool. They remind me of like of watercolor. Like tie -dye. Well, on tracing paper, it, you can get that watercolor feel on bond to some degree, but you'll see, because I'm going to do this on bond later on tonight, 
Um, but on tracing paper, that's what you're shooting for. And it, it, you can do it. You, someone asked about doing watercolors, and that's pretty much a watercolory mm -hmm. feel. Um, it, you know, if you get it right on bond, you can kind of get that feel, but not like you can on trace. It's, um, Bond or trace? Yep. I only do bond, okay. unless I'm teaching a class. Okay. And then I do, and it's just, well, I say that. I mean, I color in Photoshop now, so I don't use either. Um, I see I forgot those trees. Let me just. Hey, wake up. I also forgot some of my texture on my... Close enough. All right, now comes the fun part. Watch what happens to these... Son of a bitch. Sorry. I mean, that's kind of fun, but I want you to watch much like I love doing the shadows on the trees because they just start jumping off the page. And it doesn't take a lot to do. It goes quick, and the difference it makes is huge. You see those start to come off the page? Mm -hmm. um, and even, all right, these back trees, which you didn't want me touching, here, I won't touch all of them, but even just putting the shadows on them without anything else, It's gonna make them, and I can just dot a couple in and just make them fade away. All right, so let's get, where's my big piece of white paper and see what we got. Oh, what did I forget? The grass lines, which I will put in. And so, what I'm going to do... So, would you ever, like, leave the forest not... No. Like that? You'd still <laughs> no, fill it all in? Yeah, I would fill it all in. It's kind of it's, that, it, it's like kind that, of fun. It's, um... Like that part's not important. We're going to leave it alone. Nah, I... I... Sorry. What if we did the shadows with, like, a really dark blue? Mm -hmm. I was going to ask the same yeah. thing. Or What's this now? What if you did the shadows with like a really, really dark green? Nope. I don't think it's going to work. You want it, you want it to pop. And... It's definitely a style. Yeah. Like it's a very modern look. It's, it's cool. but it, cool. you could try it with dark, you know what? Try it. I will do. And what you can do is, if you don't like it, it's pretty easy to go over the dark green with black. I mean, it'll, you can always make something darker. You just can't make it lighter. Close enough. How much water 
Depends on how good you are at colored pencil, <laughs> but I would say at least twice as long. Okay. Um, but you can try it and see. I mean, if you want to try it and see how it goes, the the one nice thing about what we're doing in here is I'm doing eight and a half by eleven drawings. So we used to do in class eleven by seventeen, and again back in the day it was twenty four by thirty six or thirty by forty. And trust me, when you're doing drawings the size of that accurate air drawing and coloring the whole thing. The difference between pencils and markers is days. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it would take forever to do a decent job of that with Prismacolors. But with these little drawings, you might be able to pull it off. All right, that's kind of fun. All right, now, watch what happens when I do my favorite part. <laughs> it's the yellow flash. Just put a little smash of yellow on those trees. Subtle, but I want you to compare those trees to those trees and how much they start to lift off the page. I love the yellow flash. You just do that on the, excuse me, and apologize for being hard to hear and having squeaky hearing. and they'll start to lift off the page. Is that now, just a fancy crayon? Is that what that is? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's basically a Prismacolor pencil, but it's just a chunk of the lead. If you had a yellow Prismacolor pencil, it would do the same thing. Oh, okay. Or a yellow, uh, you could do the same thing with a yellow colored pencil. Can um, I? Yeah, sure. Um, I don't even know if you can find those anymore. I've had those, again, Tell longer me. than most people in this class have been alive. Um, the only thing I would do is I would go ahead where's my fat shark? I keep hiding stuff. I had it. Well, be that way. I'll find another one. There we go. I would go ahead and actually put that line in there. <laughs> it's got the red to punch it out but that red was washed out enough that I didn't like it just being the red that looks so nice it's like a plant in a terracotta pot like you can't go wrong mm. it looks yeah. so good so you do the yellow wash opposite side of the shadow? Yep, you put it on the sunny side. On the su oh, right, the sunny side. Yeah. It's, um, okay. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> now, I used to put little yellow, little red dabs in the trees, and that's kind of fun too, but the students kept calling them apples, and I got mad. And, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can you see? Yeah. Sure. Oh. So, give me some. I've got, some. I've got three apple trees, so I'll let me. Well, two now. What was my... Did this cadmium have any life left? Sure, I can put a couple... Just throw a couple... Again, it's just introducing a little red in there. Red always seems to go well with the grain. It just adds a little life. So if they're not apples, what are they? <laughs> That's their background stripe. It's a... Uh, And that's kind of fun. Ooh, I kind of like it. 